I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This video is one in my series about the Beta Flight Arming Prevention Status Flags. That's the way that your quadcopter tells you why it won't arm. Why, why won't you arm, quadcopter? I'm trying to fly. I want to have a good time and get in the air. And I flip the switch and nothing happens. I'm trying to tell you why I won't arm. I'm showing you the arming status prevention flags and you just don't know what they mean. Well, how can I learn what they mean? Just go watch Joshua's videos. He's got a whole playlist about all of them. Oh, really? Well, which one are we going to talk about in this video? The, the RX loss and fail safe ones. Yeah, all of those. Oh, okay. In this video, we're going to talk about the Betaflight arming prevention status flags that pertain to your receiver. Flags like RX loss, arm switch, fail safe, and a few others. And the gist of these is that your receiver ain't working right or your arming switch ain't working right. But there are some nuances and we'll get into them. If you are not watching all the videos in this series, if you've just kind of searched for RX loss and you found this video, let me suggest that you go back and you watch the very first video in this playlist, which gives some overview of the arming status flags, how to find out what they are and how to troubleshoot them. There's a link to the playlist down in the video description. And well, to be honest with you, I think everybody could benefit from watching the whole playlist because there's a whole lot of just basic beta flight troubleshooting that goes into troubleshooting the individual arming status flags. But let's talk about these specific ones. That's why you're here in this video. And the first flag we're going to talk about is RX loss. RX loss means that the Betaflight flight controller is not seeing a signal from your receiver. So you've got your transmitter. That's this thing right here with the sticks and the switches, right? And you've got your receiver. And that's a little thing with the antennas that's installed in the quadcopter. And if they're not talking to each other or the receiver is not talking to the flight controller, you're going to get RX loss. Now, this is not a lot of these videos. I can just say, and here's what you do to fix the problem. But this is a tough one because every flight controller is different and every receiver is different and exactly how to wire them up and configure them. There's not just one answer. Now, when you're troubleshooting RX loss, there are two different like situations you might be in. And one of them is when you're setting up a new quadcopter and you've never really gotten it flying. And so you see RX loss in the command line, and that's just because you haven't wired up and configured your receiver yet. And hopefully you'll get to that and everything will be fine. But the other way you see RX loss is if you're flying and you have a fail safe event, you may see RX loss appear in the on-screen display. And that's, that's an indication that you've had a fail safe. It means that either your receiver lost radio link to your transmitter, this thing is messed up, or it means that your receiver lost the wired connection to the flight controller. Either of those things can cause an RX loss. You can differentiate between those two by if you if your transmitter has any kind of audible alerts, your transmitter may say RSSI low or telemetry lost or give some other kind of audible alert that indicates to you that the receiver disconnected. And if you see RX loss in your on-screen display and your transmitter says telemetry lost. That tells you that you had a problem between the transmitter and the receiver. Now that could be a damaged antenna. It could be that the receiver lost power, but you know the problem is somewhere between the transmitter and the receiver when the transmitter gives an audible alert like that. On the other hand, sometimes you see RX loss in the on-screen display and maybe you're only 10 feet away from yourself and the transmitter doesn't say RSSI critical or telemetry lost. That tends to indicate that there's a problem between the receiver and the flight controller. And the number one thing that can be is that your signal wire is messed up. You've just damaged the signal wire. And the best thing to do in a case like that is, well, you could do a visual inspection and sometimes you'll find a broken wire or a damaged solder joint. But the number one thing to do is to just completely desolder and reinstall the receiver. And that will, anything that's wrong with the wiring or the solder joints, that'll hopefully fix it. But you also could just have a damaged flight controller or a damaged receiver. If you crash these things enough, eventually they'll break. It's not always obvious. And sometimes you just, you just replace the receiver just on, well, it's just, don't throw the old one out. Maybe it turns out it's fine. 
but you replace the receiver, maybe you replace the flight controller if you suspect that it might be damaged. Now let's talk about the Bad RX and the Arm Switch Arming Status Flex. And these ones are in fact easy to fix. What these two flags mean is that the quadcopter has entered a state where the arming switch is not in a safe position. So for example, let's say you've got your arming switch in the armed position, and then you plug your quadcopter in. The quadcopter will not just immediately arm the minute you plug the battery in, that would be really unsafe. So at the moment that the flight controller boots up, if it detects that the arming switch is in the armed position, it will activate the arm switch flag and it will not clear that until you cycle the arm switch to the disarm position. So if you plug in your quadcopter and you see the arm switch, what you need to do is cycle your arm switch to the disarm position. And that may be, you may go, okay, well, I'm flipping the switch and it's not going away. Well, you may need to go to the Betaflight modes tab and check that your modes are configured correctly. Let's take a look at that. So here in the Betaflight modes tab, we may need to go and we may need to adjust the position of this arming mode. We may need to set that up correctly. It's a new quadcopter and you haven't set it up right. Or maybe you um, you flashed to a new version of Betaflight and you forgot to set this up correctly. And so the flight controller thinks that the switch is in the arm position when you think it's not. Just go double check that this arming mode is working like you expect it to work. The BADRX code is similar to the arm switch code, but the BADRX code happens when you've had a failsafe event and you haven't recycled the arm switch. So let's say the quadcopter is armed, it's flying, you have a fail safe, it drops out of the sky, it's disarmed. And then as you walk closer to it, it picks up the, the transmitter again. And the now we're no longer in a fail safe state, but we're not gonna just immediately rearm the quad. We're gonna wait for you to cycle the arm switch, just like with the arm switch one. So bad RX, just like arm switch, the solution is to cycle the arming switch and rearm the quad. As long as we're discussing these flags, I also want to cover the failsafe and the box failsafe flag. And this is just for the sake of completeness. Completeness. Most of us are never going to see these. The failsafe flag occurs when the quad has gone into failsafe and it hasn't yet recovered. And when does it occur? Because why would you, you not see RX loss? Huh. Yeah, that's pretty weird. You see, the problem is that the failsafe flag occurs when failsafe is active. But the number one way failsafe is going to become active is when RX loss happens, and you're going to see RX loss instead of failsafe. I don't think you're going to see failsafe very often. Just for trivia, what other things could cause a failsafe other than RX loss? One of them could be if the receiver channel goes outside the predefined range. So this is a this is pretty esoteric, but so there are these two parameters, Rx min USEC and Rx max USEC, and these are the absolute minimum and maximum channel values that the Betaflight will accept. If any channel goes outside of this range, failsafe will occur. Betaflight will conclude that this is just invalid and shouldn't be this way. So in theory, you could get a failsafe without an Rx loss by having a channel go outside of a this, these ranges. It's pretty, it's pretty esoteric. The other, the other one that we'll talk about is the box failsafe option. And that one is invoked here in the modes tab. If you set up the, hello, failsafe mode. Here we go. If you set up the failsafe mode, this lets you manually trigger a failsafe by flipping an aux switch. And you might well ask, wh why would you ever want to do that? And the answer is, if, you want, if you're like doing GPS rescue mode, you might want to flip a switch to trigger GPS rescue mode and have the quadcopter try to fly home. Or you might just want to test your failsafe. And the most common way to test failsafe is just to turn the transmitter off while you're flying. Don't Not while you're flying though, you dopes. If you, what if your failsafe isn't configured right? And then you flip the transmitter off, ah, it flies to the moon. Only test failsafe, well, t mostly test failsafe with the props off. But if you're doing GPS rescue mode, then obviously you have to do that with the props on. Here's a little freebie for you guys out there playing with the GPS rescue mode and failsafe. If you're trying to do GPS rescue mode, GPS rescue doesn't kick in until you're at least 100 meters away from your home position. 
So if you take off, you fly 50 meters away and you trigger GPS rescue to try and get it to fly home and it just falls out of the sky, that's why. You got to fly at least 100 meters away before it'll kick in. And the reason for that is they don't want the GPS rescue to just fly it right back in your face if you take off and fail safe 20 feet away. Um, but that's not the point of this video. So that is the box fail safe mode, which is active when you uh, use the fail safe mode. So that is the box fail safe arming status prevention flag, which becomes active when you use an uh, aux switch to trigger the fail safe mode. Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for this discussion of the RX loss and other fail safe related arming status prevention flags. If you're setting up a new quadcopter, configure the receiver correctly topic for another video. If you're getting fail safes in flight, figure out if it is an RF link problem. You'll hear an audible alert from your transmitter most likely, or if it is a problem on the quad between the receiver and the flight controller, and that's most likely to be like a wiring issue of some kind. And if you're getting the arm switch of the batter X code, the answer is to cycle the uh, arming switch from disarmed arm and back again. There you go. That's going to do it for this video. Check out the playlist down in the video description for more Betaflight arming status prevention flags. All, prevention status flags. Although this is not the most exciting, sexiest topic to make a video about, I'm making these videos because so when you can't fly, that's the worst. And all of the reasons why your quadcopter will not go up in the air are contained in this playlist. So study this playlist. Learn it, memorize it, and you too will be a quad guru. When you're at the field and somebody can't get their quad in the air, you will know the answer, including your own quad. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, if there's something you think I overlooked, or gosh, if you think I got something wrong, just keep it to yourself. I don't need to hear that. No, let me know. Happy flying.